Namaste everyone. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Shubham Alok. Uh, this is a very small video as I want to share something very important. That is related to the fire sacrifice. We know it as Homa and Yagya. It, it looks very uneasy. It, it makes me very uneasy to say this, but we Hindus to remedy planets and get the desired result. Do the fire sacrifice, do the homa, do the yajna, and we do it any day. I have found that even many priests, pundits, and astrologers, uh, priests and pundits and astrologers are not that well versed with the basics of when uh, havan, yajna. See, havan is when you do it for yourself. Yajna is when you do it for the betterment of world. So, so, so to say, if you are going to do a fire sacrifice for yourself, your issues, your problems, it will be called a havan. If you are going to do a fire sacrifice for vanishing of corona, for you know, for world peace, etc., it will be called a yajna. Yajna is done for the betterment of a community, society, world, whatever. Generally, when pundits do the havan or yajna, or even when we tend to do it, or astrologers suggest you to get a havan done on one particular day, we generally don't keep two basic things in our mind. One is Agni Vas and another is Agni Mukh. And when we don't keep these two things in mind, this leads us to terrible issues. This way, we are not getting the desired result at the first place. And because of not getting this desired result, time, money, faith is getting wasted. And another thing is, as we are doing the things for, you know, we as a priest or we as an astrologer, as we are doing the thing for our clients, for people who come to us, and if the work is not giving the desired result, then in that particular scenario, it is a loss of faith and loss of hope for those people into us, into the religion, etc. So I think somehow that it should be corrected. So today in this video, we are going to deal with this same topic. Specifically, but before I go into this topic, I should tell you one very particular thing. There are many types of remedies. If I should give you a small, small introduction to all of that, I think it will not be out of place right now. First of all, wearing of gemstone is the most popular remedy that people do. There is nothing wrong in wearing or suggestion of gemstone until and unless the astrologer is suggesting you to purchase the gemstone from him only, exclusively, in which scenario he may be yeah, doing a fraud. But you know, like there are other types of fraud also, the astrologer may give you the number of a jeweler, that jeweler may be giving some commission to the astrologer, etc, etc. These are all the bad practices that astrologers do. Not going into that, in my own personal experience, I have found that the uses of gemstone is very useful in curing diseases, point one. Point two, if there is a sacrosity of any particular element in human's body or if, the, if any planet is weak, Weak in such way, see, you try to understand the logic. The logic behind the gemstone is that gemstone is of a particular color. The sun emits us a light, which is white light, which have all the colors. You know, it is pure violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. Gemstone takes that appropriate colored rays from the lights of sun and make it reach your body. So certainly the gemstone remedy should be done in those cases when someone is suffering from uh, health related issues and they want something uh, to come, come into their body. For an example, uh, moon indicates vitamins, uh, Mar uh, Mars indicates minerals, sun indicates calcium. Saturn indicates iron. So if someone is having an iron deficiency, it is better that they wear a blue gemstone, possibly blue sapphire, a gate and all these things. 
right this will help them take the blue rays from the sun and give it give it to their body which in turn will cure the deficiency of iron that is the point one point two specifically there is a particular state particular see there are two three per planetary states where the planet is not able to give you their power one is combustion when the planet is combust he cannot give their power to the native because sun being the biggest planet star basically sun emits a lot of light and when a planet is combust he is actually behind the sun when seen from the perspective of earth as sun is very bright the light of the planet is not reaching the earth which in turn makes you not have the result of the planet so when a planet is combust the best remedy you can do is wear the gemstone of the planet along with this if a planet is weak i am not talking of affliction when a planet is conjoined or aspected by malefics be the natural malefic or functional malefic it is known as afflicted i am talking of weakness when a planet is debilitated when a planet is in inimical rashi debilitated in namamsha when a planet is situated in inimical namamsha in that particular scenario though inimical namamsha and inimical rashi more goes to affliction part not to weakness part but yes planets situated in a weak rashi generally planets situated in a debilitated rashi secondly planet situated in an unfavorable rashi what what do i mean by saying unfavorable you have to understand this sun is a fiery planet if sun is situated in cancer moon is friend to sun sun is still in his friendly rashi moon is, sun is not afflicted but still be, sun being a fiery planet moon and uh, moon being a watery planet cancer being a watery sign sun in cancer suffers as the element of sun is going down as the rashi is not supporting the fire element hence sun should be considered weak in this scenario when the planet is combust when the planet is debilitated in rashi navamsha and when the planet is situated in a rashi which is uh, ruling an element which is not favorable to the planet a planet should be considered weak when a planet is weak in that particular scenario the gemstone of the planet can be worn the one can wear the gemstone of the planet but there is one thing that is very necessary and that is because wearing of gemstone will make you have the result of that planet you have to make sure that the planet is only giving you good result and is not giving you bad result so to say the planet should be lord of good houses should be giving you good fortune only in that scenario you should invite the result of the planet if the planet is the lord of the the third sixth eighth twelfth house in that particular scenario the planet is not favorable to you in these conditions when the planet is the lord of specifically the 6th 8th and 12th house and if the planet is also weak it does mean that the bad result of 6th house that is litigation fight the bad result of 8th house that, that that is death harassment the bad result of 12th house that is loss expenditure is not coming to you because the lord of these houses are weak this is rather good and uh, gemstone of such planet should not be wear one should not wear gemstone of such planets however when the lord of good houses first house fourth house seventh house tenth house fifth house ninth house second house eleventh house when the lord of these houses are weak in that particular scenario the result of these planets are not reaching you and in these cases wearing a gemstone is the most suitable remedy what gemstone to wear when to wear in which muhurta to wear how to purify that gemstone how to worship that gemstone the procedure for wearing etc are all detailed processes if you don't follow that process the gemstone may not give you the desired result as quickly as it is supposed to give see there is one thing that is pretty clear you have wear the gemstone of the planet the result of the gemstone will come if you wear it using the right method the result will come early if you don't wear using it right if you don't wear it using the right method the result will come late right so certainly anything done gives the result if the thing is put at the right place it gives quick result if the thing is put at a wrong place certainly it doesn't give a result very quickly this is the only difference results are achieved at every given point of time this is one thing another thing is mantra chanting <clears throat> for see mantra chanting you can either chant the mantra of the planet itself or you can chant the mantra related to the deity of the planet the worship of planet is also very legitimate because as per brahma parashar hora sas planets are the incarnation of lord vishnu himself lord vishnu have taken incarnation of planets as planets and uh, 
all these other incarnations come from the planets only brat parashar hora shastra is very clear that sun, that shri vishnu have taken incarnation as the planet sun and from the rays of this planet sun the lord rama is born lord rama will come into this world do his duties and go back to sun this sun at the time of delusion will go back to shriman vishnu again you must have heard a similar story in mahabharat as well where kunti is praying to sun to get a child and he gets karn where kunti is praying to yama gets a child that is dharmaraj yudhishthir when kunti is praying to indra and getting a child arjun when kunti is praying to lord vayu and getting bhima etc etc right the rays of these planets give birth to incarnations now the particular thing is see ravan was a shiva devotee then why bad happened with ravan bad happened with ravan because the incarnation for his time was rama and because he was not worshiping ram he was not giving proper respect to ram destruction happened on the other hand vibhishan who identified ram being the incarnation of this yuga treta yuga and submitted to ram gave him respect was same right so giving proper respect to the incarnation of that particular age is very important vishnu is the sustainer vishnu looks after us all and if you don't vishnu is the supreme father and if you don't pay respect to vishnu if you don't pay homage to vishnu if you don't pay respect to those in that incarnation of vishnu which is in charge of this time your sustenance will be in problem hence everyone should be a vishnu devotee without any doubt even if you do any puja in the starting for the achman you have to do keshavaya namaha madavaya namaha achyutaya namaha govindaya namaha right these mantras you have to do so it doesn't matter what type of puja you are doing which sect you belong to which faith you are into when you have to do bhumi pujan you have to worship vara when you have to do achman you have to take the names of vishnu without any doubt because ravan was also very because ravan this, there goes the story because ravan also punished the planets which are in charge of this world at this time in this set of this four yugas treta yuga sorry satyuga treta yuga dwapar treta yuga dwapar yuga and kali yuga because planets are the in charge as the incarnation of vishnu for all of these four yugas and ravan were not paying proper homage and proper respect to the nine planets in a stead he captured all these nine planets and punished he saw perish right for kali yuga kalki is the prime avatar of vishnu who is going to come at the end of kali yuga and kali yuga have uh, some more than 50000 years to pass he will end at the he will come at the end of kali yuga so uh, certainly Uh, kalki we cannot worship kalki right now there are not much stotras and mantras for kalki right so the another uh, set of incarnations of which vishnu which uh, become in charge for this time are the nine planets and as brat parashar hora shastra is very clear that these planets are the incarnations of vishnu himself for the sustenance if you want anything to sustain you should worship the planets do the mantras of the planet do the homa for the planet do the donation related to planet etc etc planets are the aspect of vishnu right so you can either directly worship vishnu or you can worship planets it is the same way it just depends on you have more attachment to whom if you have more attachment to krishna you worship krishna you have more attachment to rama you worship rama you have more attachment to planets you worship planets however this may seem like but it doesn't mean that you can either worship rama krishna or planets no no you should worship planets along with rama krishna and other incarnations that is one point another thing is there is shiva shiva is the ultimate destructor and what does he destroy he destroys the negativity and bad things from your life so when you want to destroy negativity sadness disbelief and other such tamasic qualities you have to resort to shiva right 
Another part is Devi and the incarnations of Devi. Devi is Shakti. Shakti is the power which you need to do things. Shakti is the power which you need to upheld things. If one is not powerful, he will not be able to even walk. There is a story that Sankaracharya was highly Sankaracharya was a great Shiva devotee and he was highly ignorant of Mother Goddess. Once he was trying to cross a river and he got struck in the middle of the river. He was trying to cross it but was not able to put up his feet. He worshipped like you know there is a story Devi appeared in front of him or he worshipped Shiva and the answer was that because you are not paying respect to Shakti you have lost all your energy. Because he have lost his energy, he was not even able to lift up his feet and cross the river. Right? So Shakti or power is essential for anything to happen. And for this particular reason, one has to worship Shakti also. See, let me tell you very strongly, frequently and openly, this is not the approach that I am a Shiva devotee or I am a Vishnu devotee or I am a Devi devotee. This is not the right approach. You have to be a devotee of all of them. Right? When Ramanavami comes, you worship Rama. When Durga Puja comes, you worship Durga. Right? When Shivaratri comes, you worship Shiva. When Ganesh Chaturthi comes, you worship Ganesha. This is the way to live a balanced Hindu life. You cannot imagine to ignore a particular aspect of divinity and live a beautiful and happy life. This is not going to happen. Be certain with my words. Ram Krishna Paramahans was a great Kali devotee, but he also had a idol of child Rama and he used to worship him and play with him. Sri Ram Krishna Paramahans have clearly depicted and clearly told everyone through his actions that it is the balance which is needed. One-sided favorism and one-sided support is not needed. There is one more thing which my maternal grandfather told me. It is like you understand that Shiva, Vishnu, Devi are all relatives. If you talk well to me, but you talk very rudely to my wife, it is very certain that I am not going to be happy. And despite the fact that how good your behavior is towards me, because your behavior towards my wife is not acceptable, certainly I will not be in your favor at any given point of time. Right, so worship of all of them is essential and the worship of planet is also very important. This is the particular reason before any puja, whether you do the puja of Vishnu or you do the puja of Shiva or you do the puja of Ganesha or you do the puja, puja of Devi. The worship of the nine planets, the worship of the ten Dikpalas, the worship of the mother goddess Parvati is very essential. There is one shloka that goes to... Uh, Guru Buddha Sukrascha Sarve Graha Shanti Bhavantu, which is generally told. However, this is once again a shortcut way which generally pundits use. Rather than doing this, a separate invocation to every planet with their mantra should be done if one wants to have good results in life. Worship of uh, planets and worship of deities are to pacify the planet See, the mantra chanting or worship, home worship that we do, mantra chanting, devotion to it, all three of them have different purposes. If you want to have a particular quality in yourself, a particular type of quality in yourself, you should worship that type of deity. The one who worships Devi becomes like Devi. Whatever Devi they worship, they become like that Devi. You become like the God you worship. This is achieved through Bhakti, devotion. In Bhakti, you sing the name of God, sing the glories of God, read the Puranas, texts, stories related to God. Right? Do prayers to God and imagine that God is your father, mother, brother, sibling, anything. And there is a shloka tameva matra chapita tameva tameva pandu chaska tameva tameva tra travanam soveva tameva sharvamam deva deva. This way. This is devotion. Now, after devotion comes worship. Worship, like worshipping Durga in Durga Puja, worshipping Rama in Ramanavmi, worshipping Ganesha in Ganesh Chaturthi is like Ganesha on Ganesh Chaturthi have came to visit the earth. And because he has came to visit, certainly you have to open your doors, welcome him. 
right? This is that type of thing. You pay homage to that particular entity because right now he is visiting. Right? It is like if a superstar comes to your area, you go to balcony to see him. The same thing. And he says, a superstar, he have came to the world. You should come and worship him. He will come to your home also. And because he's the remover of obstru obstruction, he will come and remove obstructions from your life also. And these are the general normal obstructions that is removed for almost everyone. Right? These are the normal obstructions that are removed every time. But if you have special obstructions, special obstructions in your life, special obstructions in the things you do, then you need to invoke him. To tell that, okay, Ganesha, you came on Ganesh Chaturthi and you uh, vanished all my normal obstacles, but I have this bigger obstacle in my life. I have this bigger issue in my life, which also needs to get resolved. So now you come to me and resolve this issue. For this particular thing, you do the mantra sadhana of Ganpati, you do the puja of Ganpati, and then he listens to you, comes and mitigates that obstruction for you. Right, this is the mantra sadhana of the particular deity. Mantra sadhana have mantra sadhana is generally focused on invocation of that particular deity to address one of your certain problem to that deity, which the deity, if they are happy with your worship, if they are happy with your mantra chanting, if they are happy with your practices, will do for you because they are the forefathers and they are. Because being our parents, because being our forefathers, because being our well wishers, they come and do this for us. Now there is one certain point. Why the Havan, Yajna and all these things are done? You have to understand it. There are three aspects to it. You, we understand it in all three aspects. The Veda Purush or humans at the time of Veda, humans living at the time of Veda, what are they doing? When the Vedic person have to get rains, because there is no rain in the world, there is no rain in their area, when they want rain to happen, they do a yajna for Indra. So, you have a work at your hand. You are not able to do that work. You will worship Ganesha. Ganesha will come and remove that obstacle. You will go and do your work. This is happening when work is there. Another scenario when the work is not there. But what if you don't have the thing? You don't have a job to do. So when the thing is not available there and you want to produce it, you have to do a havan. Your mental life is going bad. You want to remedy it. Mantra sadhana, mantra japa will do. But you are not getting a spouse for marriage. Then you have to do the havan. That is purpose number one. Purpose number two. When the God is extremely angry. After your... This, see. The process of <clears throat> mantra jab is not that simple that people understand. You know, like fast food astrology, now there is fast food astrology, fast food food, there is fast food spirituality. The process is you do the mantra japa, say for 1,25,000 times, then you do the purascharan, right? In the purascharan, you do the tarpan, marjan, then havan, then the brahman bhojan, and in Devi worship, brahman bhojan plus kanya bhojan. This is the complete process. This is called the process of Purashtra and doing one round of mantra. However, today everyone cannot do it because they don't have a proper guru. They don't have a proper person to guide them. Right. So nowadays and uh, you know, like, uh, yeah. So nowadays people generally just ch chant them, just chant the mantra. So certainly in the complete process of mantra sadhana, Havan is an integral part of it. However, nowadays people just take a mantra, just chant it for a certain number of time and that is also not bad. I will not say that it is bad. If it is popular mantra, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Om Namah Sivaya, etc. These mantras, you can just chant them or keep on chanting them as a regular practice. When you want to go with the higher mantras such as Navar, Navarna mantra and other mantras, then you have to do the complete set, the complete procedure, the complete procedure of doing the mantra, chanting it for a specific number of time, doing one-tenth tarpan of then that, doing one-tenth marjan of 
दैट डूइंग वन टेंथ हवन ऑफ दैट एंड दो वन टेंथ ब्राह्मण भोजन कन्या भोजन ऑफ दैट दिस इज द कंप्लीट प्रोसेस इट इंक्लूड्स हवन बट हाउ एवर वेन वी डू द नॉर्मल मंत्रा चैंटिंग वी की पॉन चैंटिंग मंत्रा फॉर से फोर मंथ फाइव मंथ सिक्स मंथ Our mantra chanting is also enough and sufficient, but we are not getting the desired result. In this scenario, probably we are not doing it correctly. We are not following the procedure for that scenario. In that scenario, when the person is, uh, yeah, in that uh, scenario when the person is not able to properly chant the mantra, not able to have the proper devotion. not able to have the time to continuously do the mantra in both these cases either you are doing the mantra wrong right either you are doing the mantra wrong not able to do it correctly case one or you don't have time to do the mantra you don't have the time to do the chanting you cannot devote enough time to do the chanting you don't know how to pronounce the mantra etc in these cases you can take a professional help of a pandit or someone who is well versed in doing the havan or yajna and you can do uh, the havan and kitya if the god is not getting happy to you uh, find uh, looking at your mantra chanting etc by the way of havan because in havan because you are giving oblations to fire because you are giving things to fire it becomes the duty of the fire god to take that oblations and give it to god and because the oblation to uh, mitra the form of sun uh an incarnation of the sun god because the oblation you are putting in fire is reaching god through mitra and agni the god will listen that okay this person is sending this thing for me right for example the havan of devi is done using flowers you take the paste of flower juice of flower or you take the complete flower put it in the yag havan the god agni and the god mitra takes the divine form of that flower and give it to devi saying your name that this person is doing havan and he has sent this for you devi becomes happy with the flower and she is like who is the person doing the havan what problem he is having and she comes to your rescue that is the thing right so if the god is not listening to you you don't have time you can take professional help and do the mantra chant uh, do the havan also if you have done the mantra chanting to complete the process right you have to do the, see tarpan margin you can leave because you will do the havan you will give the dakshina to havan that dakshina will lead the brahman to take food and eat it and also fulfill the you know needs of their family it is akin to brahman bhojan as well so doing a mantra chanting and to get the result of mantra chanting havan at the end is necessary if the god is not listening to you you are not doing it properly having some issues not able to carry it out then also have a necessary essential useful this is the second uses the third uses is if you have asked something from god have done a mantra sadhana for that and god have helped you into your area into the department you have got the desired result now it is a duty to say thank you to god or not or is it like astrologer you take prediction don't give it back the next time you go to astrologer he will not entertain you same happens with god as well you have invoked the deity he have done the thing for you now it is your duty to offer him something what you can give him nothing god comes to help so you do the havan for the deity in havan the things loved by the god is prescribed devi loves flower the havan is done using flowers that prescribed that loved thing of the god you put into the havan fire that thing reaches the deity but to do the havan because we do havan uh, like at, you can you do havan any time no there are two considerations for havan that have to be specifically kept it to mind if you want the havan to be successful if you want to uh if you want the havan to be successful effective beneficial give you good result the two things are to be considered one is agni vas another is agni vipa agni vas take the week day sunday 1 monday 2 tuesday 3 wednesday 4 thursday 5 friday 6 saturday 7 and the tithi number शुक्ल प्रतिपदा वन शुक्ल द्वितीय टू शुक्ल द्वितीय थ्री शुक्ल चतुर्थी फोर शुक्ल पंचमी फाइव राइट पूर्णिमा फिफ्टीन 
कृष्ण प्रतिपदा वन सॉरी कृष्ण प्रतिपदा सिक्सटीन कृष्ण द्वितीय सेवनटीन कृष्ण तृतीय एटीन कृष्ण चतुर्थी नाइनटीन कृष्ण पंचमी ट्वेंटी एक्सेट्रा टेक द नंबर फॉर द तिथि टेक द नंबर फॉर द वार एडिट एड वन डो नंबर ऑफ तिथि प्लस नंबर ऑफ दीक डे प्लस वन वॉट एवर बी द आंसर दैट आंसर शुड बी डिवाइडेड बाई फोर आई विल गिव यू एन एग्जाम आई हैव ऑल्सो मेड अ टेबल ऑन इट रिटर्न एन आर्टिकल ऑन इट दैट टेबल हैव अगुलर लिस्ट ऑन विच तिथि फॉलोइंग ऑन विच डे कैन दवन बी डन ऑन दैट डे और नॉट I will drop a link to that article in the description section of this video. Taking the tithi number, the weekday number, adding one to it is the final number. That final number should be divided by four. If the answer after division is either zero or three, okay. If the answer after the division is either 0 or 3 in that scenario agni vas or the residence of agni is on the earth you can do the havan and the result will be favorable if after the division the remainder is 1 agni is situated in the sky and if a uh, havan is done on that day when agni is in the sky it leads the result of it leads to the purpose it leads to destruction so basically the destruction of the one who is doing the havan so the one doing the havan can have health issues can have you know other types of destruction and specifically if you are doing havan for a particular purpose that purpose gets destroyed if the remainder after the division is two then agni is in the neither worlds and this uh, situation of agni in neither worlds lead to destruction of blessings destruction of good result and other such destructions so in this particular scenario the person rather than being blessed actually suffers the misfortune rather than getting blessed so let's take an example today right now is a uh, shukla dashami so dashami of shukla paksha number 10 plus today is tuesday sunday one monday two tuesday three so 10 plus 3 is equal to 13 add 1 to it 14 now this 14 should be divided by 4 and the remainder should be taken 4 3 is 12 Uh, sorry uh, yeah 14 the tithi is dashmi this is the third week day plus 1 will be 14 this 14 should be divided by 4 4 3 is a 12 the remainder will be 13 14 the remainder will be 2 the remainder 2 means the agni is situated in the neither worlds and today havan should not be done and if havan is done today it will lead to the it will lead to misfortune it will lead to ill result it will lead to bad results etc this is agni vas residence of agni another point is agni mukha agni mukha means if you are putting that you certainly will be doing when you are putting oblations to fire when you are putting oblations into the mouth of fire god which planet see vishnu takes incarnation as planets from those planets other divine incarnations of this earth come so when you are giving oblation to fire which planet is getting a part in that oblation the basic point is if the oblation is received by a benefic planet it gives you benefic result if the oblation is received by a malefic planet this will be bad however my opinion is different my opinion is for an example you are doing a fire sacrifice to get married 
Now suppose Mars is your seventh lord. Venus is uh, the karaka for the seventh. Venus is the karaka for marriage, and Mercury is situated in the seventh house. Certainly, because Mercury is situated in the seventh house, Mercury being a unique planet is not very favorable for marriage. So leave Mercury out of the list. Mars is the seventh lord. Venus is the karaka for marriage. Only when the oblation is received by Venus or the oblation is received by Mars, only in that particular scenario, the process or the karma of heaven will lead to the desired result. Because, as per astrology, as per the philosophy of astrology, all the bad and good deeds that one have done in the previous life and all the results occurring of that good and bad deeds. Will be given dispersed by planets only through their placement in the horoscope and placement in the sky. Placement in the horoscope, you understand? Placement in the sky is transit. Placement in horoscope means the sha, the sha, shastra, varaga, etc., etc. Also, the placement of the planet that's activated by the sha. So the oblation should reach the desired planet who is in duty as per the horoscope to get the work done. Is my approach <clears throat> now? Which nakshatra one have to see? So basically, whenever we say nakshatra, it is the moon nakshatra that is under consideration. However, other than moon nakshatra, one can also take the nakshatra falling in the lagna. The lagna nakshatra is also of also of uh, high importance along with the nakshatra where moon is strong. The calculation is pretty simple. I have also written an article on it as well. Right, and I am I am putting the link to that article in description. There will be a ready written list in the article that you can refer to. The calculation is simple. You start counting from the nakshatra of sun. Three nakshatras: sun nakshatra, next nakshatra, and next to next nakshatra will be ruled by sun. If one does a fire sacrifice when moon is in these nakshatras or when the ascendant is in these nakshatras, the oblation is received by sun. The sun nakshatra, next to nakshatra, and next next to next nakshatra is ruled by sun. The oblation reaches sun. The next three nakshatras after the nakshatras of sun are ruled by Mercury. The next are ruled by Venus. The next three are ruled by Saturn. The next three are ruled by Moon. The next three are ruled by Mars. The next three are ruled by Jupiter. The next three are ruled by Rahu, and the next three are ruled by Ketu. So basically what I am saying is the nakshatra of sun to the third nakshatra the oblation goes to sun fourth third nakshatra to sixth nakshatra oblation goes to mercury sixth nakshatra to ninth nakshatra oblation goes to venus ninth nakshatra to twelfth nakshatra oblation goes to saturn of the 13th, 14th, and 15th nakshatra, oblation goes to moon. Of the 16th, 17th, 18th nakshatra, oblation goes to Mars. Of 19th, 20th, and 21st nakshatra, oblation goes to Jupiter. Of the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th nakshatra, oblation goes to Rahu. And of the 25th, 26th, and 27th nakshatra, the oblation goes to Ketu. Say, for example, right now, Sun is situated in Revati nakshatra, fourth pada. Right. So if the moon or the ascendant is in Revati, Ashwani, or Bharani, then the oblation goes to Sun. If the moon is in Kritika, Rohini, or Mrigashira, oblation goes to Mercury. If moon or Lagna is in Adra, Punar, Vasu, or Kushya, oblation goes to Venus. If moon or Lagna is in Aslesha, Magha, or Purva, Valguni, the oblation goes to Saturn. If moon or Lagna is in Uttra, Valguni, Hasta, or Chitra, oblation goes to Moon. If the Lagna is in Swati, Vishakara, and Radha, oblation goes to Mars. If the Lagna or Moon is in Jeshtha, Mula, or Purvashada, oblation goes to Jupiter. If the Lagna or Moon, Lagna or moon is in Uttrashada, Sravana, and Dhanishtha, the oblation goes to Rahu. And if Moon and Lagna is in Satvisha, Purva, Bhadra, and Uttra, Bhadra, the oblation goes to Kit. One should do a Havan on a day when the oblation goes to the planet who is in charge of that particular area as per the horoscope of native, only when this is kept into consideration, 
the havan will lead to the desired result as per my advice because planets are in charge of dispersing the result of the good and bad karmas we have done in our previous lives it is very important to direct the spiritual karma or remedial karma whatever we are doing direct it to the planet to have the most favorable and optimum result thank you for watching this video we'll meet you in the next video namaste have a good day